All right, guys, welcome back to the Court Spot. I'm Hugo, and I'm joined with... Uh, your father, uh, father, Chris Corciani. Yeah. Chris Corciani. <laughs> and uh, today, we're back, finally, you know, long overdue, but we're going to be talking about ACC basketball, ACC tournament, and uh, the transfer portal, and, of course, the yearly uh, awards for the ACC. Big ACC uh, episode. It's March. March Madness, baby. Let's get into it. All right, first topic, we got ACC tournament. It's back in Greensboro. How do you feel about that? Love it. That's where it belongs. It belongs in the Carolinas. It does. It just it does. goes way back uh, years and years when there was only eight teams. Now we've got so many teams and we've got it in Florida. We've got it in New York. New York DC. and all this it, garbage. It's best when it's right in the heart of basketball country. Um, you know, I, I'm okay with Charlotte. But it, I love when it's in Greensboro. That's where it belongs. I mean, it makes sense. They, they set up states that way. Usually the capital of the state's in the middle of the uh, of the state. Yep. This is in the middle of ACC country. So, yeah, you know, I remember years ago the, the, the ACC tournament. Actually, the NC State was in the finals down in St. Petersburg, mm. and I'm like, it's in Florida. People didn't even know what was going on in Greensboro. The city shuts down, and and they've got great presence, and it's easy to get to. That's true. And it's just where it belongs. So I'm happy that the tournament is back. I'm actually, I, I need to say this too. We're happy there is a tournament, you know, with yeah, everything all. that's been going on. So, uh, blessed to see another ACC tournament. Definitely, definitely. And uh, in this tournament, a lot of teams are looking to win some games. A lot of teams are, are you know, they're hungry. They're hungry to win. Who do you think is going to win the overall tournament? Well, you know, I mean, this year the ACC has been down. It's the worst year in 30 years that, that I can remember when mm. there, there isn't one team that is, that is superior. I mean, you've got a bunch of teams that that really aren't that good. You've got a few teams at the top and a few at the bottom, and then you've got a number in the middle that are all fighting for their lives. Um, you know, I, I look at it, there, there's three teams I like, and and I'll tell you, I'm not going to tell you who I'm going with right now. Okay. The team that I think is really playing the best basketball right now is North Carolina. I think that they're they're peaking at the right time. They had a great win against Duke the other night. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they have an ability to put a run together. I think they're playing pretty good basketball. The other team that on paper really looks good is Florida State. You know, yeah, I like Florida deep. State. They got great athletes. Uh, Leonard Hamilton, doesn't matter what year, it's the same team he rolls out every year. Long athletic team. Long athletic. Uh, they've got some good shooters. they got size. But they, they, they lack the consistency. I mean, they got beat mm -hmm. the other day by Notre Dame, which I would have never thought was going to happen. Yeah. Um, so they concern me a little bit. The team that, you know, I, I really think is, is the one that you know exactly what you're going to get out of them every night is Virginia. And and that's why I, I, I feel Virginia will be cutting down the nets this year um, just because they're consistent. You, you know mm -hmm. that they're going to struggle offensively. They're going to play hard on the de defensive end. And they were the outright ACC regular season champions. So that that's what I think. A lot could happen because the parity is, is great. Then my other team that's playing well is NC State. You know, they've yeah, well, those two teams, it's interesting. They face off against each other. Who, who do you have winning? For me personally, I have NC State. I think, uh, you know, we're hungry right now. Impressive, uh, impressive away wins recently. And uh, our team, our team is young, but we're looking to upset. Well, it's funny is NC State's interesting because Devin Daniels, they're, they're one of their arguably best players on the team goes down with an injury. And the team just changed. I mean, they look different. They're they're playing different. Um, they've had a remarkable run. Kevin Keats has done a great job the second half of the year of kind of keeping them with confidence, keeping mm -hmm. them playing hard. And um, you know, but, but that's the beauty of this tournament is anything could happen because there isn't one team that is superior than than another. Yeah, I like that. Well, like you said, Virginia's number one for a reason. And that's why you're going with them. Yep. But I'd have to go number two, FSU. I just, I like the way this team plays. Uh, Scotty Barnes, you know, he's a freshman. Got freshman of the year, sixth man of the year. I think he, uh, I think he's going to have a good performance. Scotty Barnes is a great player. I mean, he, he does is. it all. He shoots the ball. He's a great passer. 
very long, has a, over a seven foot wingspan. It's got the longest mm. arms. But um, they've and got he plays. Number. He plays with the tenacity that I like. He's a yeah, he's a big well, player. They they all play that way. I mean, to me, Florida State, they just get after it. They press. They play 10, 11 guys. Um, so not a, not a bad pick. I just wonder if they're gonna have a hiccup along the way. Mm -hmm. So like I was saying on the the last segment, Scotty Barnes, he got six man of the year and freshman player of the year or newcomer of the year. I don't know what they're they're calling it. But uh, yeah, let's talk about the end of the season awards. Who do you, uh, who do you think was most deserving of the player of the year? I tell you, you know, if, if, if you look at all the players on the first team, mm -hmm. um, it, there wasn't one that just kind of stood out. You know, they, they all had good years, but it, normally in an ACC year, you've got one guy that, that is leading the way, or there's two guys and it's debatable. But this year, they, they, they all were good. You yeah, know, and, and it wasn't one that was, you know, going to be the first pick in the NBA draft or, a, you know, it, it was wasn't one that, you know, was on a team that did all the winning. Um, Moses Wright had a phenomenal year and so did Georgia Tech. So I thought it was very deserving uh, of him to get player of the year on a down year. But he took his team, Georgia Tech. And if they can win a game or two in the ACC tournament, you know, they're going to be dancing. So he did a mm -hmm. lot for his team and also individually uh, just had a stellar, stellar year. Yeah. Shout out to Moses Wright, uh, Raleigh kid. He's a uh, he's a grinder and he's really improved upon his game. Uh, another Georgia Tech guy, Jose Alvarado, got defensive player of the year. How do you feel about that? I love Jose Alvarado, the way he plays the game. He's tenacious. He, he hustles, um, changes games on the defensive end. I mean, yeah, there's not sure. a lot of players. Now, I love Manny Bates because Manny Bates, being, being a point guard, when you got that big guy back there and you know you're being protected and the guy goes around you, he changes the game on the defensive end, much like Jose Alvarado. And, um, you know, I'm sure that was, you know, a tough decision to make because Bates does it more with blocking shots, blocking and rebounding. Shots. Um, but Alvarado just changes the whole tempo of the game, led the league in steals. Um, and, and again, Georgia Tech had a, had a phenomenal year. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about uh, Coach of the Year. They gave it to your boy at Virginia Tech. How do you feel about that? I it's great. You know, Mike, Mike Young's done a tremendous job coming in in his second year. Um, was at Wofford, always had great teams at Wofford. But again, that's something, I mean, you, you can't give it to Tony Bennett every year, but they that's won. True. Leonard Hamilton, great year. You know, some would have had a you know, a, a vote for, for Coach Keats from what he did the second part. The second, second after, half of the year. After yeah. an injury. But again, one of these years where there wasn't one team that just kind of went crazy and, and got it done. But, but I think Mike Young, for what he did at Virginia Tech in his second year, um, they're going to be dancing in March, and um, you know that that's something that they haven't done a lot of. So yeah, I mean, great job, Mike Young, and, and uh, uh, I think it's very deserving. So last segment of the day, uh, get to talk about the transfer portal. Obviously, with you know COVID, a lot of a lot of new things are coming into play. Uh, players are now allowed an extra year, and when they transfer, I actually didn't notice until recently, they they play instantly. They don't have to sit out a year. So that's it's pretty crazy. Going to be the craziest off season. Now listen to me when I say this. We have never seen anything like it. The transfer furs, it's going to be out of control. It's going to be, you know that game you play like musical chairs? Yeah. You better not get left out in the cold. It, it's, let, let, let me explain something to you. You're going to have teams, they're not going to know what the roster looks like. you, you mm. got players that went to low Division One schools that are really good that have wanted to maybe transfer up a level to a better team, but they didn't want to do it because they had to sit out. They're too scared. They, they didn't want to, you know, eat, like you said, sit out of Not the case this year. So you're going to see mm. lower level teams lose good players. Then you're going to see players that were at very good conferences, very good teams that weren't playing, they weren't starting. Mm -hmm. Every player wants to play. They think, me 
transfer and I can get in and play right away. So you're going to have a lot of disgruntled players that aren't happy, they're going to leave. Then you're going to have really good players that think, you know what, I'd be better suited here. I didn't like the system. I didn't like that. You're going to have them leave. Then you're going to have seniors on top of all this that are going to say, you know what, yeah, I'm probably not going to play in the league. You know, I'm going to come back for another year. So what you're going to have, very good for the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to have opportunities. It becomes a burden on the coaches. They're not going to know who the roster is. They're not. They're going to be recruiting in the transfer portal. They're going to have kids that they've recruited in high school that are coming. You're not yeah. going to know who's coming, who's going. We have never seen anything quite like this. That's that's like my biggest problem with this is. How do how do the coaches wrap their heads around this when they have they have kids coming in, and then now they have kids potentially coming in from transfers coming going out from transfers and seniors who well, want to stay? Who, who is really unfair? In my opinion, the senior that has made a commitment to go to mm -hmm. a university and to get an education and to play basketball, they're the ones who are going to get hurt because they made that commitment thinking that Billy. Joe was a senior and was going to leave. Okay, mm -hmm. He also didn't know that a transfer was going to have the ability to, to play right away. Right it's, away. It's okay. You're a senior in high school, and, and you're going to go play at NC State. Okay? Yeah. Here, here, here's the thing. You know that somebody was sitting out a year because they were transferring, that he was going to play next year. This year, that's not the case. That's out the window. They transfer right in. So it, it is going to put a, a burden on the coaches to make sure that they're recruiting in that transfer portal, that they're trying to keep their incoming players happy, that they're not losing the players they have. So you're gonna have to recruit high school kids, you're gonna have to recruit in the portal, and you're gonna have to recruit your own players so they stay. Just to stay, yeah. It's gonna be a nightmare. It's, yeah, it's, it's probably gonna be one of the craziest uh, transfer sagas that we've oh, seen in a minute. Gosh. It's it's just going to be, you know, I've talked to a couple coaches and they said, we don't even know what to expect. You know, we've got to try to keep our players. We, we, we don't know who the, what the roster is going to look like. There will be so many, trans, we, we, you know, every year the transfer portal and the transfers increases every year because you have kids that don't want to wait to play. Mm -hmm. You know, you go back 30 years, you didn't see many transfers. It was kind of, you know, it, it didn't happen. And in the last 10 years, you're seeing more and more of that. It's going to be three, four, five times as much as it's ever been because you don't have to sit out a year. Again, great opportunity for kids, but it's going to put a lot of pressure on a lot of coaches that they're not left out in the cold with no roster. It's going to be interesting to see, obviously, uh, the transfers and ACC tournament. Hopefully our predictions come true. You got Virginia. Well, no, hold on a second. Hopefully, oh, well. I want NC State to win. That's like, oh, we so, all want NC yeah, State to win. So, so hopefully, my, my not prediction, they run the route and they mm. get dancing in, in the tourney. But I just think Virginia, a lot of stability. Um, they've been there before. Those guys are seasoned. I just think they're best suited for it. I like your pick with Florida State. They're the most explosive. They got the bigger ceiling of any team. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be fun. Look for FSU to make a run. This guy, he's preying on the downfall of NC State. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing. You stay over there with that prediction. But no, I don't. I, I want him to win. I don't. I don't think they're gonna be able to run the table. We'll see. Thank you. That's all we got for today. And uh, stay tuned. We're gonna have some more episodes out very shortly. Thank you.